make us look. So we are live. Yeah. So uh, we'll get started. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everybody uh, who are joining us today uh, in this uh, panel discussion. Uh, the uh, topic of the discussion is nurturing new technology development during the time of the pandemic. Uh, uh, how do con people continue to invest in new technologies? Uh, how do you uh, fund them? How can in the time of the pandemic uh, people mix together and continue to innovate? Uh, we, we thought that given uh, we are possibly getting out of the pandemic in some markets things are a lot better. We will broad base the dialogue. I have with me today two, three eminent uh, panelists. I'm Shikhar Reddy, uh, CEO and MD of Sonata Software based out of Bangalore, India. And I said I have three eminent panelists with me. Uh, Christian Barkey or Chris Barkey, the CEO of Barkey GmbH, a German medical device manufacturing company uh, focused on medical technology used in hospital and intensive care, and also most recently uh, investing in cell and gene therapy manufacturing. Uh, then I have uh, with me uh, Brett Hickey, with over 20 years of private investing and wow. banking experience. Uh, he's the founder and CEO of Star Mountain Capital, a multi-billion dollar specialized uh, private uh, investment firm. And then we have uh, Milvoy Batista from uh, Switzerland, but right now out of Dubai, uh, who's had uh, large project management experience with companies like L'Oreal and Ski Data, Swatch. And he is now an entrepreneur and since uh, 2013 investing in blockchain technology. He's now got Atrom Network, uh, which is uh, a, a platform looking at uh, uh, getting people together. Uh, and address uh, different challenges being faced in the world. So that's the fantastic panel I have with me today. And we look forward to a very exciting and interesting conversation. We want to keep it uh, very interactive. Uh, uh, if there are people who are wanting to ask some questions toward the end, we're quite happy uh, to entertain uh, questions. Uh, but to just uh, kickstart uh, the uh, the event that uh, I will uh, start out with one specific question with each of my panelists, and then we will take those answers and uh, and then have a further discussion. So I'll start with uh, uh, Chris. Uh, so Chris, uh, given the sector you are in, uh, you know what are the future technologies uh, you are seeing uh, which are going to influence in your tech sector? And how do you personally facilitate and encourage uh, innovation in your organization? Uh, and anything else you, uh, you would like to add on the topic, uh, please go ahead. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's what I thought. We'll kick start off with you, Chris, and then we'll go with the other panelists. Yeah, thank you so much for this um, beautiful introduction. Very delighted to be here with you all, guys. And um, yeah, as you just mentioned it, we, uh, greetings, by the way, from Boston, Cambridge. Uh, we just opened our um, secondary uh, headquarter here in Cambridge, um, where currently you can say is the cell and gene therapy hub. Um, we just experienced over the last 10 years a huge um, shift in terms of um, fighting cancer. And um, it's the, the, the buzzword for this is called immunology. And um, so we're taking actually cells out of the human body, modify them and send them back uh, to fight cancer. So um, this is an, an, still in an early change. Uh, companies like Novartis, Kite, Pharma, uh, have been the early ons and um, it is a you can say manual um, procedure right now but uh, with the um, let's say increase of the robustness of the process itself uh, we have been challenged to fulfill the demand of all our clients around the globe nowadays uh, that includes by the way China too where we'll we open an office very soon um, means 
uh, in order to, to let's say, um, be ahead of time in terms of new developments within this uh, specific industry, uh, we have really, really a, a gross um, pass in front of us, which is uh, technically uh, every day changing because as soon you have a robust process, you have to scale. And while scaling, technology changes too. It's all about the, the output of those companies and the, uh, what they are currently looking at. It's called high throughput manufacturing. Yeah, Shrika, this is a little bit about Barkey right now, where we are at. And um, we are facing uh, as well in the near future. And you could might see some of the last news um, uh, more to come. Biontech just recently uh, bought part of this uh, new technology from Kite. Uh, Novartis invested just um, a few days ago $10 billion uh, into this sector as well. Um, means there's more to come and um, yeah, that fits, I think, very, very in, in our strategy too. Brett might um, know this already for sure and he can uh, maybe contribute more information on this too later on great uh, thank you chris uh, i'll now go on to brett brett you are the uh, investment banker amongst us and uh, so how, what are the technologies uh, your firm is looking at investing how do you evaluate the future of these technologies when you invest uh, and then what do you see afterwards in terms of the continuous innovation by these companies? What are the challenges they face? Anything else you may want to add? Sure. And maybe just a point of clarification. Uh, we, we're not an investment banking firm. We're a, an investment firm. So we, we do private lending, private equity, and we also purchase investments and portfolio portfolios of investments on a secondary basis with approximately two billion dollars and 75 people across america so with within that um one of one of Starman's trademarks is investing in the growth engine uh, of america and we today invest in u.s and canadian companies within that our focus is not on startups but on companies that are established and we're helping them grow to the next level uh, that market segment, as you can all imagine, Google started somewhere, Facebook started somewhere, they all started small. And so our objective is to really find businesses that have high quality end market needs and then assist them with strategic capital and advice and relationships and resources to grow their companies. It's a very broad range of sectors that we invest across uh, some of the more technology-focused ones, I'll break into two categories. I think there are the what I'll refer to as traditional businesses and how is technology changing them. So let's think about preschool chains or pet hotel boarding and grooming or peanut hauling and manufacturing type of companies, logistics type of businesses light technology, but it's technology that helps interface with clients, customers, um, delivery, all of the different things like that. Technology is really allowing these businesses to operate with better intelligence, better transparency. And given in North America in particular, where there's a retiring and an aging demographic, a lot of these small private business owners which for folks in India, it might be surprising how big that marketplace is. There are about 215,000 companies in what's referred to as the lower middle market in the U.S., which excludes the few million startups that exist um, in the United States. So of established businesses, a lot of them are owned by people that are looking to retire or sell. And a great way to create value is to combine a few smaller businesses into one bigger business. But when you do that, you now have an owner that's managing a much more complex business versus if you just own your own business and you have a few small shops, well, you don't need as much technology. Now that you're bigger and you want to properly manage and understand what's going on with your business and evaluate it, you need technology to help you. So I, I, I'll refer to that as technology that's really 
software and different type of interfacing technology that's really across everything and there are different solutions for all businesses. That is actually quite robust because those companies represent about 50% of US GDP is the largest market in the world. So that's big. Then I'll get into the more traditional technology things that people think of when you think of tech. I think people think of more robust innovation. Uh, examples that we invest in there include companies like telehealth businesses. Uh, we invested in telehealth prior to the pandemic. The pandemic, of course, accelerated not only the desire for telehealth medicine, but the need for it. And of course, India, in fact, um, is is very much driving this forward. And there are, there are countries like India that the need for that is also extremely robust. And I think you're going to see businesses like that continue to grow um, exponentially. There are other technology companies, if you think of the way we consume information, the way that people market and advertise, uh, Star Mountain has a very deep background in media and advertising technologies. And so those are some sectors that we've invested in a lot, including pre-pandemic, where many of these companies have grown dramatically. One small example I'll finish with here, um, everybody knows Google, I presume, and one of the companies Google owns is YouTube. YouTube has a massive amount of content, both what I'll refer to as professionally created as well as user-generated. So if you're an advertiser and you want to advertise, YouTube can be a fantastic place because between the Google capabilities and, and what YouTube has directly, they can know a lot of information on a lot of people, which is good for targeted marketing. Everybody may not realize all the information known, but ultimately that helps you know provide good targeted marketing to bring relevant services and products. The challenge when you're trying to advertise there is, well, where do you advertise? How do you advertise safely as far as what your brand is affiliated with? You may have some yoga instructor that has a fantastic audience that you want to advertise your products or services into. And then maybe that yoga instructor wants to talk about some political issue that you don't want to be deemed affiliated with. Well, you don't want to have your advertisement go on. And then right after that, here's some political rant or whatever it is. And so you need a lot of... Um, I'll call it artificial intelligence light and a lot of know-how to do that safely and effectively. So when you think about today, how people consume information, that's technology and media is, is radically transforming things. Great. Thank you, uh, Brett. Uh, I think very interesting that the way you put it, that there are too broad. One is what we don't consider as high tech, but can make fundamental difference to business. And second is what are traditionally called high tech and uh, making more game changing kind of solutions to the market. Uh, very interesting insight. Uh, uh, now I'll go to uh, Milvoy. Uh, Milvoy, you have uh, now a startup uh, creating a social media platform based on blockchain technology. So, so what have been the, your challenges in setting this up and, you know, getting it to a certain stage. And I'm sure you're trying to raise funds or might have raised. Uh, and what are your potential investors looking at your, your at you from? And what, what are the, what is it that they want to know about your business? Um, yeah, I'm, the challenge, I think we all had the same challenge in the last one and a half year. And as well, had the same acceleration process involved in that what we are doing in our daily business. Um, we are not basically a blockchain-based uh, social media platform to correct that. It's Blockchain is one of the tools okay. we are Sorry. using. No, no problem. No, it's, no issues at all. Okay. Blockchain is just like it's it's an engine, right? As, I mean, it is as good as the car built around it. If you you, you can use it and have uh, all the use of it and all the the add values, or you you just mismanage the whole blockchain, and then you have a lot of troubles. It's uh, the it's the same thing. A lot of people expecting here miracles from blockchains, which I do not really believe into th that these miracles will happen. Uh, the blockchain is as good as the people are using or are coding it. We have uh, other technologies, DLP, uh, ex uh, extremely effective uh, artificial intelligence. Um, what we are doing, we, we are combining on our platform uh, 
all this technology. We, we know, uh, okay, blockchain makes sense here, but we have maybe a supply chain management process, maybe a certification process, maybe in some banking uh, retail parts uh, makes sense. Still not to an extent where we say, oh, wow, that's now the that's now the technology for that uh, sector, but um, it's one part of it. Then we have the, the DLT, we are using social media uh, we build our our part around it, integrating a gig economy in the social media platform, um, using artificial intelligence in the artificial intelligence part. Uh, I mean, we are really, really focused on an ethical behavior when it comes to coding, which is, this is the hard thing to find. I mean, we had a lot of sessions. Um, I um, just was listening to a gentleman before me. I'm sorry, to, uh, in my flow now. Now, um, having artificial intelligence for target marketing is a is a real real good thing so because you don't you you keep the money of your clients together and you're very effective on the other side when you see what artificial intelligence is able to do then you have some bad examples um without want to name now uh, the, the horse and his rider but um we had just passed or so what can happen in election processes and in other very important fields what this is the dark side of artificial intelligence and targeting uh, uh, people with your message. And what we try is tr to open, um, it's not open source in that sense, because open source is as open as the source uh, uh, who is providing the information. So I don't, there's another thing I don't believe, sorry. <laughs> it's like, uh, the, um, but... Um, we think there is an ethical way by keeping things as transparent as possible and agreeing in groups, in networks, on process uh, behaviors, on on how uh, uh, information status are collected, how they are processed, where they are going. All this has to reach a level which we are far away. We are still in the dark age. How we treat data and how we, I mean, some big players really found out the best way for them. Um, and I mean, their success shows that they're on the right path in that. From the ethical standpoint of view, we are in a dark age. We don't know what they're doing actually with the data. We don't know where they are stored. So in our platform, we try to bring here a certain amount of transparency uh, on one side. And our focus, when we, when we talk about artificial intelligence, then it is more to to push sustainable development goals. It sounds now like very big. I mean, uh, we're talking here about 17 themes, very, very complex issue to integrate that uh, in the whole platform and environment. But what we found out, first of all, we have to reach people when they're young, you know, and we have to build the bridge and understanding what SDGs are, right, or how they can be implemented in your field. It is so complex, and that's what makes the whole project so complex. So we are collecting uh, information through our partners, our business partners, and develop with them together in baby steps uh, processes which make sense, right, because... Um, uh, one of the, the, just to give you an example, I don't know how much time I have, so I don't want to go over. Uh, uh, one of them is like a focus on micro, small, media sized corporations. So we have like 300 million registered micro corporations worldwide, another 300 me million medium and a small and medium sized corporations in every country. It's a little bit different. In the United States, a small, a medium sized corporation can go up to 500 companies. In Switzerland, it's 50 companies subject to the country the rules and the way they are looking at it. But it's a huge market. So when you want to push through uh, the, the, the sustainable development goals on this level through this, through this process, um, how do you transfer the know how and teach them? what sustainable development goals really means in their field of business and how they can, can uh, collect this information which really helps them. And that's where the social media platform comes into the game, where we're connecting like-minded people from the same industries who artificial, where artificial intelligence helps us to evaluate the same level of know-how and process uh, understanding and then combining them to building strong partner relationships and this way we hope we could create um, let's say supply chain uh, from the gold in Brazil which 
obviously does, should not be washed out by merc with mercury uh, ending up in electronic parts. So th that's that's the goal to build here a real sustainable use of platforms, technology, and environments as we know that today. So that's uh, uh, what we are doing or try to do. Let's take it this way. Great. No, no. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Milvoy. So maybe uh, I'll just get back to uh, uh, Chris and uh, and then probably throw the question open to everybody. So Chris, uh, how, how do you encourage innovation in your organization? How do you continue this whole thrust in your organization to do newer things, find newer things? Uh, what is the environment needed, etc.? How do you do that? Uh, thank you so much. Very, very good question. Um, I was responsible for the internationalization of our company for the last 20 years. And now with three headquarters, we uh, learned one thing for sure. A business is very local and you have to stay very closely with your um, relevant clients and partners. So my new role is um, beside being here, the president of Barkey Corporation in, in and the East Coast, uh, it's also about business development. And uh, I really literally go inside the labs. The, the same thing I did just yesterday, for instance, I walked into the labs uh, and talked to the uh, pioneers in the field uh, about the applications and their needs and demands. So out of this uh, knowledge, we really could can um, build new Applica uh, applications and uh, shape and form future with them together. And it's, as I told you a little bit earlier today, um, from a very, very early on, we call it early process development, and then it will, it's called the tech transfer, from the tech transfer, and then later into something which is um, mass production or close to mass production. It's a, it's a huge difference in um, the technology and um, this is how we actually uh, extract information and uh, trying to transfer these information into new uh, product development. This is how we currently do it and it works very well and people appreciate um, being with them outside in the field, close working on those um, say solutions uh, and then taking it from there. And there is currently no standard um, where we can say, okay, this is exactly how it will be for everyone. But um, m as more years go by, as more, um, let's say, experience, uh, all of our uh, companies are collected, we uh, can pretty see clearly where we, where we have to head to. Great. No, that's some pretty good insights, Chris. Work with the teams, go with them on the field, encourage them. Some fantastic insights. Brett uh, or Milvoy, do you want to add anything on how does one encourage innovation, keep the whole spirit of wanting to do new things going in places where you're involved in currently? Whoever yeah. wants to start first. Uh, Milvoy, I mean... Mm -hmm. or, or brand I my, yeah, my, my five second view would be I think it comes down to strategic planning is, is setting long term goals and then doing the research and figuring out what technologies can assist you with that and then um, trying to find the um, you know the right people as, uh, as Millboy mentioned the, the implementation of technology can be quite complex and finding the right people to do it is, is really critical yeah. All right, very yeah, very critical getting the right team in place. Milvoy, you'd like to add anything on? I fully agree to, with Brad. Uh, this, everything stands and falls with the people uh, you're working with, it, and it's it's a lot of time. The know-how is here, but the mindset is that what you, what is missing. That's you find in technology often people who go to the borders of that. Um, let's take it this way, not everything we are able to do, we should do. And so keep people in the box and say, hey, that's the direction where we go and and try to create a, a, a global conscious mind that we are 
that we all should work together as one, right? And, and protect, not only protecting our business, of course, we all have to pay our bills. We all have to go uh, do uh, uh, what we have to do to keep our company on it. But thinking more for each other in a way and say, hey, uh, there I could give a hand and here, and maybe I should not make this extra money on top of it. Uh, walk away a little bit from this, uh, optimizing the profits for for every price right so that's i think this is uh, this mindset is that what i'm really looking for and and it's very very hard to find the right mindset this is my experience okay very 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 good to see that all of you are saying first get the right people with the right mindset with the right intent uh, a lot of other things good things will happen i think some great insights uh, maybe I'll move on to funding and go to uh, Brett. Uh, so how do you evaluate uh, ideas, people? What do you look for? Uh, and uh, and what are some strong no-nos from your side when you say everything will be great, but, you know, this is like, you know, doesn't count for us. So how do you do that, uh, Brett? Maybe there are a lot of people who are interested in knowing and I have some great ideas, but, you know, uh, what are people looking for, so on and so forth? Yeah, I, unfortunately, it's a reasonably complex equation I think, to do it systematically right versus um, I think sometimes luck can be confused with uh, having a good strategic process. And you see right. that in venture investing often where the probability of being right is, is actually quite low. Um, yeah. within the lower middle market of established businesses, that's one reason that we focus on companies that are already established so that there is more that you can diligence. How, how are they getting customers? How do the customers feel about the business? How diversified is that customer base? How valuable is that product or service to the customers? Um, when we have a, a very detailed um, data-driven investment methodology that we developed over our team's few hundred years of, of investment experience. And what we try to really triangulate is at the top of the funnel, what is the end market and does it make sense? And then as you get deeper into the business model itself, it's understanding customers. And I always think that the concept that revenue can solve a lot of problems. So if your expenses aren't being perfectly worked out, but you're doing a good job with your product or service for your end clients, then that gives you the opportunity to continue to work on your operations. Whereas if you lose your revenue, um, it's tough because then you need more capital to continue to work through that. And there are some business models that just require tremendous amounts of capital. Uh, in general, we tend to be a little bit less focused on that and a little bit more focused on businesses that can generate a high cash flow. Um, and then you get into the people, the processes of the business as you get deeper in the alignment of interest, uh, the uh, motivations that people have and making sure that you're always doing business with high quality, high integrity people. That's one of the reasons that at Star Mountain, for example, we have at least one person local in over 20 cities across America is because we want to really make sure that we have the local relationships to know different people in the community from everything from churches to schools to other business organizations, people that have transacted and you've done business with before. We want to get as, as many insights as possible into the characters uh, of the people that you're doing business with because as the old adage goes, you can't do good business with bad people. And our general belief in life is that most businesses that are successful on a systematic basis, it's not because they went like this, it's actually because they went like this. And that means you want businesses that can help mitigate the challenges as you're growing and building, capitalize on the opportunities and continue to do that. And that is more of a um, repeatable systemic way of investing which is what our focus is great and a lot of a lot of great insights uh brett ob obviously you're looking at cash flows business model and most importantly as you said is it run by good people very interesting that you have people who are close to the society where these people live in to understand that so very very interesting 
so milway uh, i did ask uh, you you must be you must have raised money or in the process of raising money so what are your investors looking for or what is your pitch to your investors uh, basically we are not really pitching at the moment what we okay. try to do is uh, first of all we have we are a network it's not me alone doing something great it's we have a uh, of uh, almost 22 projects at the moment connected to the network we are each one is financing its environment self because what we don't want to do is like we don't want to uh, experiment with investors money first of all it makes a complex very very complex environment if we do that For, uh, second is uh, we all try to implement in the structure what we learned our know-how of the past years and th there is a lot of there's a lot of trial and error involved in this process um conservative investors are investors in this field they're not really today prepared to to go through all experiments they want to have a certain amount of stability in that what you do and known that this process at least the technological part of the process is working and then of course the vision to the market as Brett already explained so i don't want to go to to that part uh, again so what we do is um we want to generate to, to grow in a in a, um um in a speed which allows us to be uh, on a level where we say okay we have now income through that view in small scale and then escalate with bigger partners together if possible the partners being part of the investment society to this project in the network so that's basically what we are looking for to make sure that there is an interest and not only financial interest from that because to get money on a market right it's it's i mean the 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 business plan is as smart as the people who wrote them uh if you have a good an advisor he knows which are the best and keywords which the investor wants to see um then you have these programs where they put together to go around them is is not so difficult i would say and so th there's a lot of money in the market inside the question is who do you want really walking with you and you want to have really good people with you who have uh, who bring an add value with you not just money if it's just money it's I mean, it's fair enough. Even in the moment you need money to pay your service and uh, technology and people and everything, you're very happy about that. I can tell you, I can tell that. But when you reach the next level, you want to have real good people with you and say, guys, you willing picking up your phone uh, at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's like on that and uh, go with you to a to a difficult process to see if you're on the right path or not. And that's what you're looking for when it comes up. So at the moment we are uh, developing with institutions together. I'm sorry, I don't want to share the names here because it's, it's a public panel here, but uh, uh, we're developing with institutions together these environments and seeing there have then like some budgets which I say, oh, okay, here in this technological field, we can give you from our budget some because we have that value in the marketing part or we can use this story to sell it on another level to, to, uh, to public to make known what we are doing in what consents. And we had ex as well experiment in the past with uh, um, some crypto assets, which have uh, in the sense to to optimize these flows. But with uh, which I have to say, it's very limited in the sense uh, because crypto is getting more and more regulated, and on the in my opinion, crypto is a voucher. You should deliver service against that against the token the crypto and all that and using it less for investment purpose because you're facing on, on unbelievable problems in future with that so the, there's another thing so the, we went through this part as well and therefore um we just leave it open see what people join the project and then decide while we fly how we are uh, take people or finance or investors on board Right. No, thank you. I think very interesting. So you're saying, while uh, Brett said we look at who we invest in, you're saying I look at who invests in me. So very nice. So, so obviously both have to <laughs> have a common ground, and that's a great combination, I think. But this is so, uh, this is sorry. Right. 
this is the this is the important part, you know. It's like Brad has a, has a certain interest, of course, to protect uh, his idea, his team, his network, who gives the money, you know. And that's very nice to see to say, hey, man, I want to know with whom I'm working, and I want to have a feeling for him, and I want to, I want to be in his sure. ear, and I want to understand his environment, and we the same. And this is basically a perfect match when people have. This is for me what I say. That's the right mindset to go uh, out there and look at projects. This is really Absolutely. impressive. Absolutely well taken. So, uh, so Chris, you want to add anything to this whole funding part? Um, I was quite happy when we uh, got our first round and uh, got to learn about each other's uh, businesses. And uh, yeah, we actually um, looking for um, next to partnering. Um, any kind of corporational model, buy build uh, stories we can can do, and as well funding too. Um, as you know, growth does not come for free, and uh, especially uh, if you have a very very fast moving market um, with um, global upscale, uh, then we we are really happy to continue even after this um, talks um, to. You, Brett, probably if this is one of your interests. Uh, but in general, I can say I see a lot of uh, those um, occasions happening. Um, I, I heard that there have been just this year, um, I think there was a period of time within four weeks where $15 billion were uh, just for our industry invested, um, where we could see this is an absolutely a uh, hot topic right now and um, I would I would assume that it will stay at least for another two to three years uh, like this and of course along with the side effects which we had COVID um, for this specific industry um, was there was a little delay and then uh, it came back very strongly and made it all back so this is what I really would like to add here yeah thank you great so I mean, I guess uh, this will be my last general question and I'll have a two, three questions. Each of you can decide to answer whichever question you want. So one is, uh, have you seen more innovation during the COVID times? Uh, and, you know, have you seen new areas emerge because of COVID? A third is really, I heard somebody mention about SDG goals and, you know, that's now a lot of people are talking about it. Uh, how are you all seeing that uh, in your business and as the world goes forward? Uh, I mean, anybody can start. I leave it to you. Or if you want me to choose, I can choose. But uh, And feel free to answer any of those questions, all the questions. But yeah. For a second. <laughs> I guess I touched on how is innovation changing during COVID is one of the questions. Is that right? Yes, right, right, correct. And are there new areas which have emerged because of COVID? Uh, third is the SDG. Yeah, I think on the new, I'll maybe try to address the new areas for COVID. Um, sure. We talked about how I think generally there are everything from pharmaceutical to cleanliness, health and wellness, testing. And I think that's a broad category um, because I think there's home health related things. There's things that apply to schools for those of us that have young children and thinking about, well, how are our schools keeping places um, clean and, and sanitary? And that gets into uh, even different air filtration systems and, and things of that nature. So I think you're seeing um, various consumer product innovation that is being much more focused on now. And, uh, we talked about telehealth as an example of not only a, a convenience, but really a, a requirement uh, for many people. And I think that's accelerating because it became a requirement for those who have wealth. Whereas unfortunately, there's a lot of people that can't afford good health care that telehealth would really be valuable for, but that really wasn't driving pace of innovation that would be perhaps ideal from a humanitarian perspective. So I think there's actually a lot of um, hopefully positive things coming out of this. And if, and if COVID can settle, fingers crossed, uh, with the Delta variant and other, uh, I think there are a lot of good silver linings. Some of the other ones that 
perhaps are, are not yet fully known are how are people going to work and function? There's obviously the video conferencing platforms, but then there is, do people work more from home in developed worlds uh, where people have space to work from home? Um, is that something that we're going to see more of? And how does that, how does that change things, including logistics? So again, there, there are the things that seem pretty obvious, but I think if you want to, at least from an investor's hat on, you want to think a few layers deep and say, okay, well, what, what are the ripple effects and where's the value that's not as obvious? Because if it's really obvious, it probably isn't as easy to get value from as, as one might think it is. And that's usually when you see a momentum-based economy like we had in the late 90s and you see now, Typically, that um, doesn't play out so well. I always like to remind people that the NASDAQ dropped 65% um, in 2001 and took almost a decade to get your money back. Um, so not, not for the faint of heart, shall we say, but sometimes people have short, short memories uh, when they chase fear or greed. But if you look a bit deeper into some of the other transportation logistics, for example, if people are more at home now, less going to stores, you have more deliveries. If you have more deliveries, you have more drivers. Driving is dangerous and you need driver training. So for example, that's that's a company we've invested in as well as a driver training company and the demand is just exorbitant. Um, and so try to think about, well, how are things gonna change and what are you gonna need to do differently? And um, I think that's, that's gonna be a big one. I would guess that you're gonna see a lot of change in and around education as well. I think China has been a place that, that has done things a little bit differently and having some, I'll almost call them super professors that get paid a lot of money and will present to a lot of people at once. It's hard to know whether we'll start to see more virtual training that way and more virtual engagement. I would guess so over time. We're not currently seeing um, a tremendous amount of that, but I think there are, there are a lot of sectors that are changing uh, you know, pretty rapidly in how society wants to operate and how they want to live and, and what they're hoping technology can, in fact, do for them. Great. So, and I think uh, uh, you'd, uh, I mean, what's your point of view, Milvoy or Chris, on any any of those points are raised, yeah. Um, I mean, from the SDG is is in my opinion it's a guideline you know which we all should put our eyes on it it's not that uh, i mean you don't make it uh, your bible now but it's good to 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 see and to understand what i saw now through covid is that um people changed lifestyle people uh, retraining very very big uh, issue, you know, where do they learn the new skills? Having technology available, seeing hundreds of platforms popping up like mushrooms everywhere, but uh, uh, on a level which allows only people uh, who already have a good equipment, like a good desktop, a good uh, smartphone, and everything, to use this environment. But when it comes then to the rural situation where people maybe have a six-year-old smartphone or not even have a smartphone or an old laptop, when you see the technology, it just just doesn't work. I mean, even you see it here uh, around the world. I had to use uh, Chrome 14 to be able to participated this panel right but there are many many other people as well as at least as interesting as we are you know who maybe don't have this opportunity really for to use this technology which is made available to them and this is a very big issue the other thing people working from home you know um i have a lot of uh people in india working for the project around the project in the network where you say uh, people say oh well, wonderful they're now home they don't have these two hours to go to the work two hours back so they can work more but what they don't understand is often yeah in they have families 10 people living in the same apartment because it's part of the culture standard there right and how do you create an environment for them being able to work and to deliver in time and keep up with the quality so there is a lot a lot of things uh, my focus 
for the next two years is definitely making the best technology available to the people, but on a level where everybody can use it, no matter what kind of equipment you have available, to participate in this in this society, in this new society we are growing in now, right? Creating opportunities for people who have really a friend of mine has a has a an institution or a project called seven billion minds right and uh, th that explains so well what they're doing and creating an environment for having everybody or give everybody the possibility to participate in this new society we are forced to create right after covid now. so that's uh, that's i think that's where where we are going and where our focus is Chris, what, what is your, my, your thinking my, on that? Yeah, res being respectful with the time of everyone, of course, uh, just my last words. I, I agree to all of uh, what have been said today. Uh, what I also could feel is if a face-to-face -face in real life meeting uh, can't be replaced by any good Zoom teams or any platform we are currently using, uh, there's nothing else uh, like engaging like the, the real thing for me personally. And I uh, just had a meeting uh, two days ago, three hours with um, three remarkable personalities and uh, it felt like a different world. And uh, I encourage everyone still keep contacting people even though covid um try to make, go out and um yeah at least have a dinner lunch or some short meetings that's very valuable and keeps us alive thank you great no thank you i think as you mentioned chris we have run out of our time so uh, so thank you thank you all uh, very much uh, each of my panelists chris brett milway was very uh, illuminating and uh, to have all of you today on the panel and some very interesting uh, points raised. Obviously, these are all topics where you can spend days together and still don't have talk enough about it. So, so we try to do our best within 45 minutes to get as much insight uh, and uh, 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 knowledge out there. So thank you all for sharing this platform with me. Uh, stay well, stay safe. Uh, and as Chris said, yeah, we should all look forward to meeting in person soon somewhere in the world. Thank you all very much. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Be well, Thank everyone. You. Have a nice Bye. weekend. Thank you. Bye, Bye gentlemen.